Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss L again. Um, we're here to do another reading lesson today. So Miss L is going to read you a story, and then you're going to answer some questions to go with it. And the story is also going to be used for your writing lesson this week. You're going to write an opinion piece on what animal you think is the coolest. So this book, I'm going to share my screen with you right now. And this book is about different um, animal discoveries. So once I pull it up, you'll be able to see it. And it's called Animal Discoveries right here. It's a level book, it's level O, and you can see there's pictures of different animals. So we're gonna read about different animals that have been discovered throughout the world, and new animals are found every single day. So if we look at this, we see our table of contents which is one of our text features that we've learned about this year. And we can see that in our table of contents, we see our chapter names and the pages we can find them on. So if I was looking for underwater wonders, I would look on page 11. If I was looking for the glossary, I would look on page 16. And the glossary is where I can find words with their meanings that I don't know. And we'll talk about that more as I read along. We also see this map right here, which is another text feature. And this map shows us the continents in the world, except for Antarctica. So we're gonna keep going. Introduction. So before we even start reading, I see this picture right here. And I also see this little tiny blurb underneath the picture. And this is called a caption. So if I read the caption, it says the Bonaire banded box jellyfish's scientific name is the Tomoya Oboya. The name was chosen in a contest. The winner said most people would say, oh boy, when seeing the jellyfish. So that's how that jellyfish got its name. Introduction. If you want to find a new animal species, where would you look? You might look in a remote corner of the globe. Scientists find more than 15,000 animal species each year. That's 1%, more than 1.5 million species we know about already. At the same time, species are dying out at record rates around the globe. For this reason, when we do stumble on a new species, it's an important discovery. Monkey mania. In 2007, a new species of monkey was found in the forest of Central Africa. The Lasula has large eyes and is shy and quiet. The first one was found by a scientist and was being kept as a pet. In 2010, scientists found the Kaketa Titi monkey by listening to its calls. This monkey lives in the Amazon jungle. The Kaketa is known for its bushy red beard. It doesn't have a white bar on its forehead as other Titi monkeys do. Its babies purr like cats. Only around 250 Kaketa Titi monkeys are alive today meaning the species is endangered. So that word right there is bold, and I know that word's gonna be in the back of my book in the, the glossary. Freaky Fabulous Frogs. The Montaigne Narrow Mouth Frog is the size of a pea. It was discovered on the island of Barino in 2010. It turns out the scientists had seen these frogs before. They thought the frogs were young of a different species. Then they heard the frogs calling. Since only adult frogs make calls, they realized that these tiny frogs must be full grown. Scientists discovered the long-nosed tree frog in 2010. This frog lives in the Boja Mountains of New Guinea. The area has been called the Lost World. This tree frog is known for its nose. It's sometimes called, it's sometimes called the Pinocchio frog. When the male frog calls, its nose points up. When the frog is done calling, its nose falls. No one knows why. Furry finds. We look, we see another caption right here in this box. When the blossom bat feeds on nectar, it also helps pollinate the flower, which can then make the seeds grow new plants. So furry finds. Another find during 2010, Boja Mountain's trip was the blossom bat. It used its long tongue to drink nectar from the flowers. During its 2005 trip to Madagascar, researchers found Goodman's mouse lemurs, not much bigger than a mice, 
these tiny lemurs jumped around in the trees at night. During the daytime, they sometimes sleep in empty bird's nest. Then we have this other text feature right here, which is a little inset, and it says, do, do, do you know? Lemurs are only found in Madagascar, and this is what a Goodman mouse lemur looks like. Interesting invertebrates. So we look at this caption right here. It says, Sazima's tarantulas are only found in the tabletop mountains of Brazil. These mountains have a different climate than the surrounding areas. So interesting invertebrates. Scientists think that vertebrates, scientists think that vertebrates, animals with backbones, make up only 3% of all species. The remaining 97% of animal species known to scientists are invertebrates or animals without backbones. Sazima's tarantulas has a special beauty. Its dark blue body almost glows. This fantastic arachnid has a limited habitat. It only lives in high mountains of Brazil. So I'm going to read this caption right here because this is a strange looking animal, Miss L thinks. Like most insects, plant hoppers go through stages of development. This young plant hopper is just beginning to develop wings. So discovered in 2013 in South America, this new type of plant hopper looks strange. The wild hair isn't hair at all. When the enemy attacks, the hair, so it's in quotes because it's not really hair, but that's what it looks like, breaks off and the plant hopper can jump to safety. That's what scientists think anyways, but they aren't sure. So this again, we're gonna read the caption to go with this picture. The Gorgon's head starfish is named for the Gorgons from Greek mythology. These creatures had hundreds of snakes on their heads instead of hair. So underwater wonders. Scientists found that Gorgon's head starfish in 2010 in the Atlantic Ocean. The Gorgon's head is a type of basket star. It has five arms that split off from its body. The five arms have as many as 5,000 tips. The tips help it find its food by floating in the water. It also uses its arms to walk along the ocean's bottom to protect itself. It took until 2013 to find the walking bamboo shark. Like most sharks, it is not a threat to humans. It lives off the coast of Indonesia. Scientists found it because the colors on its back are different from the colors of other sharks. This new species uses its fins to push itself along the ocean floor in search of food. The wiggling movement makes it look as though it, the shark is walking. So this is the picture of that shark right here, and this is the caption underneath. It says, the walking bamboo shark has different patterns and stripes and spots from other bamboo sharks. Hiding in plain view. Alinguitos have smaller, rounder faces and shorter tails than other alingos, which they were mistaken for. So hidden in plain view. For more than hundreds of years, scientists thought that the Alingato was another species. In 2013, they discovered that they had been wrong. The Alingato leaps through the trees at night. The smallest member of the raccoon family, it can be found in South America. And then we have this little inset right here that says mistaken identity. Humans may encounter an unidentified species for years while mistaking it for familiar species. This often happens because the two species look the same, at least on the outside. These are called cryptic species. They are only found to be distinct when scientists study their genetic codes. As DNA technology is used more and more, reports of new distinct species are on the rise. In 2009, researchers found the Cambodian tailor bird. Test shows that the tailor bird was a new species. Scientists also studied the bird's song. While all tailor birds sing, no two species sound the same. Sure enough, the song of the Cambodian tailor bird is different from all the rest. What's next? So we see a pie chart up here, and I'm sure when we read, we're gonna figure out what this pie chart is about, but I see insects, plants, arachnids, fungi, crustaceans, mollusks, bacteria, fish, and all others. 
which are types of species. And I know that by the name of the chart. So we're going to read to continue to find out what this chart is about. What's next? Scientists continue to amaze us by finding new species. Experts agree that many more have yet to be found. Many of these new found species are in danger of dying out. Finding them means we can help save their homes. Doing this can save the animals that live there. Both those we know about and both those we know about and those we don't know about yet. And then here we have the glossary, which is all the words that we talked about that were um, bolded in our reading. These are just the definitions of them. So you can look at that if you need them. So what you're going to do, Miss L has read the book aloud to you. And what you're going to do is you're going to answer the three questions that Miss L has underneath this video. And you're going to have your parents take pictures of them to send to us. Or you can type them into Unified Classroom or Microsoft Word, whatever your teacher, um, whatever your teacher's preference is. I know Miss L's class, you guys can just write out the answers, have your parents send me a picture, and we'll be all set. So it was great to see you guys. And I really can't wait to see you guys in the fall, hopefully. And I'll see you guys next week.